Welcome to this week's video and it's probably one of the most requested shootouts I think we've had and that is to put the Volumio Revo up against the DMP A6 Ever Solo Master Edition but using both as transport only meaning of course the DAC in the A6 is disabled and has no effect on the outcome. So here is a great question because which one is going to win and in the tradition of all our blind listening tests we've uncovered something fascinating about this head to head and all will be revealed right after the introduction. Welcome to this week's video and of course we had a week's break last week and now we're right back into the thick of blind testing once again and as I said in the introduction this week it is a direct head-to-head -head between the Ever Solo DMP A6 Master Edition and the Volumio Revo which of course many of you have requested. So in terms of what this means as regards testing of course as I said at the start the uh, Ever Solo will be bereft of its DAC in this test and it will be used as a transport only the Revo is of course a transport only device and it's picked up awards and there's already some great reviews out there on this apart from the obvious aesthetical differences we have of course the price differentials uh, and I'll bring the price of both up on the screen right now of course the Ever Solo costing more but again people will buy this and use it as a standalone device hence the additional money not only giving you a very nice OLED display screen it also has its own built-in Sabre Pro DAC so <laughs> Let me just quickly show you where we were in the showroom, people's facial expressions during this test and then I will come back to you with some information about how it all went and it's pretty surprising and I'm going to go into some detail on this and explain why this has revealed something I would say not necessarily revelatory, I think a lot of you might anticipate this might be the outcome but here we go. First thing again is just to talk you through the setup that we had and uh, taking care of amplification duties this time round was the Musical Fidelity M8XI integrated. This was connected in an analog fashion uh, to our Aqua Formula XHD and then of course both devices digitally connected to the formula. The loudspeakers were actually the entry level speakers from Revival Audio and that's the Sprint 3 stand mounts. Again I'll bring up some details of those. Interconnects and cabling were all from High Diamond. We used High Diamond 7 loudspeaker cable and then High Diamond uh, 
digital connections and high diamond 7 analog from the DAC to the amplifier. So, first thing to say is that one of the things we learned straight off, and in fact, when I first sat down to have a listen and we were using Rune, I can tell you straight off, I could hear zero difference between both devices. Andrew, our sales manager, was changing the inputs on the formula. We'd synced both to play identical. So when we were playing any of our tracks, when you switched, it just sounded like a slight crackle in the sound uh, because of the syncing. So it just sounded like that, nothing else. That, in, in essence, was a great way for us to test because when the change is instant with no gap, you're not necessarily relying too much on memory. And I think, as we've kind of covered in past videos, our recall of audio in a memory sense is not always 100% accurate and you need to have that facility to change very quickly in order to establish which sounds best. So, straight off, I could hear no difference. Uh, and I said to Andrew, this is pointless because they, sound, they, they sounded identical. Honestly, I would have sworn someone was trying to trick me and they were simply playing the same device and clicking <laughs> the input just to create that effect of they were changing, uh, but it, they were just absolutely identical. So that was in Rune. So at that stage, it felt you know, this is not going to have any purpose or meaning whatsoever because we just cannot hear any difference between the two devices. We then switch to the device's own apps. Now, this is where it all kinds of, again, gets a bit interesting because we have in the past proven that the Volumio devices respond exceptionally well to their own app and in fact work better on their own app than they do with Rune. So by doing that, then we could hear a difference. But again, I'm going to really emphasize this. The differences are absolutely minuscule. So when we did the rune testing, without exception, every member of our team said they could not hear any difference. It was as though each device was the same. So we could have had two other souls connected up, the outcome would have been exactly the same. They could not differentiate one device from another. When we switched to their own apps, there was a subtle change. And again, the one thing I will say, I think if you have a Volumio device, using its own app is going to gain the best performance mm -hmm. for that device compared to other control apps that are out there because on its own app, the Volumio suddenly sounded much more expansive, there was more depth, and again, this is probably because everything is tuned specifically for that device. But, once again, the differential of performance from one device to the other was so small, it became very difficult to tell the difference. Now, Another very interesting fact that we learned. So, so in essence, just to kind of bring that to some kind of conclusion, and this is something that I have discussed with clients over the years, and in particular, there's one client that immediately springs to mind who was looking to update a particular device that he has to the latest version. Mm -hmm. And the feedback we've had from other clients that have done this, that the performance gain was quite small. But upon further investigation into his system, I established that potentially the biggest gain in terms of performance for the money that he was considering using for the upgrade would have been better spent on his DAC. And I think this really does underpin that particular advice because clearly the DAC is playing a huge part in this particular comparison. Now, the other takeaway, and this is something we learned, so the Eversolo, in order to 
gain access to its upgrade clock. So when you go transport only with the Ever Solo, the only difference is uh, that if you compare it to the standard edition, you still get access to the better femto clock on the master edition. The upgrade op amps when you go master are lost in this comparison because they only apply to the analog output and thus effectively become redundant in this particular test. So um, this then leads to the next part, which is on the ever so if you connect it any other way other than the USB, you don't then have the master clock benefit. This also applies to the Volumio. Now, when we started the testing, we were using the Volumio on its AES EBU 110 ohm digital output into the formula and the ever solo on USB. And we all kind of agreed that certainly the Volumio didn't quite have the sense of warmth in this particular example that the Ever Solo did. Uh, and what we then discovered was that if we connected the Volumio via USB, thus also giving the Volumio the benefit of its internal clock, it then worked best. So, I guess this is a very, I would say, multifaceted example of both devices sound great, no question, they are easily worth the money they cost and they sounded fantastic in the setup that we had. That splitting one from the other depends on a number of factors and there's so many variables here and this is why, and I've said this previously, if any of these devices are on your shortlist, you 100% should try and compare at home and test them using all the variables that we've spoken about because we also will recognize that some DACs perform better not on USB, they perform better on an SP diff, which can be transformer coupled, or in this case where we tested the Volumio, we used AES EBU, which as it transpires for that particular device, wasn't the best way to connect it to the formula. And when we then did a singular test where we compared outputs on the Volumio, it definitely sounded better on USB, no question. And equally on the Ever Solo, when we tested it on USB versus an SP diff output, once again, because of the master clock aspect, the Ever Solo again won through purely on the way you connected it up. To do a meaningful test where we used USB on both is very difficult. We'd have to have a second formula and run them both USB and then switch it on the amplifier. And unfortunately, we don't have a second formula here or else that is a test we would 100% have done. But on the testing that we did do, we discovered that again on the USB connections, using their own apps, both sounded great and it would be impossible to determine which sounded best. And this brings back to the personal choice. So these are indistinguishable in terms of performance. If I had to pick one, I think you know it would have, you know, this is me personally, I like the simplicity and the ease of use of both to a certain extent, but the simplistic aesthetic, the lower cost of the Volumio would get my vote personally. I like the app, I think it sounds great on the app and if you're going to connect it USB to your DAC, then that is going to bring you the best performance based on the testing we did. But once again, you have to establish this for yourself. And it's not just a case of taking a word for it. My advice is always to try on USB, try it on AES, try it on SP diff, try it on its own app, try it on Rune and see what you hear and what you prefer because ultimately you're the only person that has the right opinion when it comes to any of this. 
and those raging debates that we've seen across forums where people say, oh, this device is definitely better and that device is definitely better. It's completely subjective because we all like different things. Nobody's system is identical because even the mains power that comes into your home has an impact on how your system will sound. So unless you have everything identical, same room dimension, same speakers, the exact same positioning of a system, your system will never found, sound the same as someone else's. And that's why all your choices are very much personal to you. And as a business, and I guess an ethical business where we really care about people making good choices, and that's tricky you know, when you're spending this amount of money you want to get it right. Unless you can make that comparison from one device to the other, you always have that little niggle at the back of your mind about, mm, I wonder, I just wonder if this device might ultimately be better. But if you've done the AB comparison, then you know for absolute certainty that the choice you have made is indeed the correct one for you. What we can do is we can advise you based on listening preferences, existing components, and then perhaps narrow your choice down to from two different devices. We're always happy to let you try two at home to make sure that when you finally make your decision, you've done it for the right reasons. And it is vital to spend time listening. I would say that in a short listening test, you might find you think you have a preference, but living with a device day to day and really integrating that into the, I would say, serious listening that you do when you are engrossed and fully, I would say, launched into your music. It's becoming part of your emotional response. You are completely there in that sound stage and it's just all you know it's like washing over you it's, it's a wonderful experience um so that does kind of change as well how you perceive sound also what else is going on in your life that day what have you just been doing all of those things impact on your sound perception and people often report that their systems sound different when they listen to them and part of that is also to what else has been going on. Your frame of mind has a massive impact on how you listen to and appreciate music. So this is a very conclusive but inconclusive week, if that makes sense. What we, I think we have demonstrated is that as transport-only devices, both are exceptional to the point we couldn't pull them apart on certain tests using Rune, for example, it was impossible. They, they sounded identical. I mean, absolutely identical. Bearing in mind, of course, that was still the Eversolo on USB and the Volumio on ASEBU. Possibly, if we could have run two formulas, as I said at the start of the video, the outcome may have been different. So this, again, re-emphasizes the fact that comparative listening in an unhurried way meaning you can really take your time to appreciate the subtleties from one device to another, even just the way they work. And of course, aesthetics are going to play a part. I think the Eversolo is a fantastic looking device. I think it looks incredibly well engineered and it is. The build quality is fantastic and everything about it is well thought out. The Volumio, on the other hand, has got a very simple, clean aesthetic that is very different to other things out there which you may or may not prefer. Again, there's no right or wrong or else we'd all drive the same car, all our wives and girlfriends, boyfriends or partners would all look exactly the same, we'd all have the same haircut, wear the same clothes, eat the same food. Uh, what a boring world that would be and thankfully we live in such a colourful, vibrant world of spices, season to taste, different flavours, hues, tones. It is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So there we go. It's, a, it's an interesting week. I didn't, I'll be honest, didn't anticipate this is what would happen. In fact, nobody did. And we were all kind of 
like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is going to be interesting because they sound the same. They sound exactly the same. As we then got into the subtleties of app differentiation, the, connect the connectivity differentiation, then we start to hear changes in tonal presentation. So just to recap, from our testing, the Volumio definitely sounds best on its USB connection in our test. Now you may get something different, but from the testing that we carried out, it was conclusive that on USB, it sounded significantly better than on the AES EBU connection. On the Ever Solo, the same applies USB because of the master clock aspect that is connected to that output compared to the SPDIF equally produced the best results. As far as the Ever Solo is concerned, it sounded really good on Rune and on its own app. I would say that's not so true with the Volumio on our testing. It sounded best on its own app and not quite as good on the Rune testing. So, finally, we have the inconclusive conclusive result that it is really impossible to pick between the two and this means you will have to decide for yourself if both of these devices are on your shortlist. You could argue that for the money you save if you don't need the DAC then the Volumio makes the most sense assuming of course you have no need for a display and that you like the aesthetic or the very different style of aesthetic the Volumio brings to the table. And finally, as always, every week a very small favour to ask. If you're enjoying watching this video or have enjoyed watching any of our previous videos, I would so appreciate it very much if you were to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It means a great deal to us. I've mentioned this before, we're a small family business and your support is what matters. We would not exist without the support and the feedback and the interaction that you give to us week after week. And also I want to thank everybody over the years we've been in business who have helped us become the business we are. We are so grateful for the business that you have given us and we will continue to strive to do our very best to provide you with great video content, great musical devices, and of course, something in terms of our roadmap of videos that will get your attention, something you'll look forward to watching week after week. So please, if you have got a few seconds to spare, please subscribe to our video. That would be so, so great if you did. And finally, as ever, if you haven't already done so, why not consider subscribing to our newsletter too? That comes out once every two weeks. There are early bird offers for our pre-loved devices that are coming in and also you will have access to very exclusive offers that you will not see anywhere else. You can subscribe if you don't feel it's for you, you can unsubscribe again when the newsletter comes out. It's one click, that's all it takes and you are done. Now, in terms of what's coming up in the, in the coming weeks, we're going to have, I suppose, a magazine style video in the next one that we do, which is going to cover some of the really exciting new products we have coming into us here at Elite Audio. We then plan to do some system featuring where we will give you systems that we recommend from uh, entry level all the way up to esoteric level, explaining why we think these are a great combination. If someone is looking for a completely turnkey solution whereby we can provide you with everything to bring you a system ready to go that will sound great, that is our intention. We are open to suggestions as well. If you have an idea of something that you would like to see, please put it in the comments or better still, email us. Drop me an email personally, I will bring up my direct email address so you can send it straight to me. You know that I'm the only one that will get to see it and I'd love to hear your ideas, suggestions or even general feedback. We can't learn, grow and change and improve without feedback and knowing what you like and what you think we could do better for you. So, there we go, another week's video done. As, of, as ever, I wish you a great week listening to music. It is the best.
best way to relax and to unwind it is for me personally. I listen to music all day, but when I go home and I want to really unwind fully, music is the way that I do it and it's just so, it's good for your brain function as well because relaxation and de-stressing are such an important part of our health. So listen as much as you possibly can. I look forward to seeing you next week and in the meantime, thank you very much indeed for watching today.